Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at Season 2 of Smallville. So Season 2 picks up where Season 1 left off. And throughout the season, Clark learns more about his lineage. He discovers who he is, where he's from, without learning too much of course. So before we begin, I just want to say that the last two videos I uploaded, it took a while to make and that's because I've had complications regarding my work hours, balancing my other hobbies and interests and mental health issues as well. But don't worry guys, I'll be fine. I'm just not going to be able to produce content for the channel, you know, as rapidly as I used to. But just bear with me, I'm, I'm going to do the best I can for the rest of the year. I may have to cancel one or two videos here and there, but again, I'll do my best. So it's debatable whether or not this season is an improvement over season one. Some people say yes, and some people say no. As for me, I'm in the former. I say that this is a bit of a step up from season one. You know, season one was great, but season two is a little bit better and we're going to get into why exactly. So first of all, let's talk about Clark himself. This is the season where he finds out that he's from Krypton and his real name is Kal-El. These aren't spoilers guys, if you know the story of Superman, you should know all this stuff by now, unless you've been living under a rock for the last 50 years. He learns that he has a greater destiny ahead of him, and this is where he begins to have tendencies to kind of run away from it, because he's not ready to embrace it. And that's natural, it's kind of like, you know, everyday people being afraid of their futures, you know, myself included, so it's a very relatable idea and I think it was executed brilliantly. Lana's friendship with Clark begins to grow this season and some other things are happening to her as well. Her living situation changes and she also makes some interesting discoveries regarding her biological parents. Jonathan and Martha Kent are now extra cautious when it comes to Clark's secrets and that's largely due to how season 1 ended and how season 2 picked up from there. Lex begins a romance in this season, and he even teams up with Dr. Hamilton, a character who was introduced in season 1, to investigate something that could expose Clark's secrets. John Glover, who played Lionel Luther in season 1, was promoted to a series regular in season 2, making him a mainstay for most of the show. It was great to see more of him, and through him we got to learn a little bit more about the history of the Luther family. Meanwhile, Chloe feels that her friendship with Clark is being strained just by him spending more and more time with Lana, making her kind of jealous. I mean, we know these two never really ended up together, but a lot of people ship them. This is also the season where Clark discovers his heat vision in episode 2, Heat. And the way he discovers it is actually quite hilarious. It's through an aspect of teenage hormones that I think we can all relate to. I also really enjoyed the fact that the season tended to focus more on its story arcs as opposed to just Monster of the Week episodes. They tried to balance them out a little bit more. And that way, there ends up being less filler in the season. Although there are some skippable episodes that I'll still recommend in the watch guide. One of the most important elements of the Smallville lore is introduced in this season. Red Kryptonite. Now Red Kryptonite was initially introduced in the Superman comics but in the comics all they pretty much did was give Superman mood swings, long hair and a beard and I think long nails as well and I think it made him a toddler on one occasion so yeah a lot of really goofy stuff if you ask me. In Smallville however, specifically in episode 4 of season 2 aka Red, Clark gets a hold of a red kryptonite ring and it turns him evil. It changes the way he thinks and he treats it as a drug. This episode was a smart commentary on drug addiction among teenagers, which is still a serious issue today. And I think Tom Welling did a really good job in portraying a somewhat corrupted Clark Kent. And this isn't the only time we get to see that, so yeah, that was cool. The season also introduced Jor-El the biological father of Clark Kent. And ironically, while he was played by Marlon Brando in the Christopher Reeve films, here he's voiced by Terrence Stamp, who played General Zod in the Christopher Reeve films. It seems strange at first, but I think he was perfectly cast for that. 
And this isn't the only time we'll be seeing or I guess hearing from jor -El. One of the biggest reliefs in the season is the fact that someone actually does find out Clark's secrets. I'm not going to say who, but it's actually a good thing. And more people will find out as the show progresses, whether that's good or bad. But the best part about season 2 is the episode Rosetta. Why? Well, it's the episode that introduces Dr. Virgil Swan, who is played by none other than the best Superman ever, Christopher Reeve. So who is Dr. Swan? Well, he's the man who has the information on Clark's lineage and he provides it to him. But the cool thing about it is that in a way it feels like a passing of the torch from one Superman to another. And in behind the scenes interviews, the producers knew that at some point they were going to bring Christopher Reeve on board to cameo in the show. And while Christopher Reeve himself did admit to being skeptical of the core concept of Smallville, he actually ended up liking the show and approved of Tom Welling's performance. And as the icing on the cake, we even got a small glimpse of the original Superman theme by John Williams, which you'll hear more frequently throughout the last few seasons of the show. Considering Smallville paid so many homages to the Christopher Reeve era of Superman, it makes perfect sense. And the finale ended on a solid cliffhanger with some really interesting threads left dangling for season 3. Now, while season 2 is great and definitely a step up from season 1, it still falls into the same formulaic aspects of season 1. While the show tended to focus more on its story arcs from this point onwards, it was still kind of stuck in a Monster of the Week territory to some extent, and most of the Meteor Freaks was so conveniently in Smallville High making them easy for Clark to find. That and some of the tension between Clark and his parents regarding his abilities, the friendship between Clark and Lana, you know, the ups and downs that come with that, and all the corny teen drama elements of the show. Some of these things were starting to get a little bit stale in this season. And the other issue I have is that some episodes are not particularly good. And they're just there to kind of, you know, fill out the season. Plus the season is 23 episodes, so it's the longest season in the entire show. But other than that, everything else is fine. So yeah, that was my review of Season 2 of Smallville. Next time we're going to be looking at Season 3, and this is when the show goes in a bit of a darker direction. So thank you all for watching, please be sure to like the video, share it and subscribe, hit the notification icon, be safe during this time, and I'll see you soon.